don't lead the guide. The guide will lead you. The guide will tell you what you have to do. You will see elephant in the park. You will see the monkeys, the baboon. You will see the green monkey. And then when you get to our bo water bodies too, the dams, if you are lucky, you will see crocodiles too. In the year 2015, the Forestry Commission submitted uh, a dossier to UNESCO World Heritage Site to consider enlisting Mole as a World Heritage Site. And so the Forestry Commission approached the European Union delegation to Ghana for support to help uh, carry out a census to enable the Commission update the management plan and also to keep an up-to-date information on the population of flora and fauna. And uh, what do you call it? The swimming pool. What makes this wildlife survey in unique is that we are not just using one methodology. We are combining an aerial survey with ground counts, where there are roads, we'll be doing counts from the roads, with specific scientific methodologies at specific different distances from um, the road. We'll also be doing walking counts in areas where there aren't many roads. And then in addition, we have a camera trap survey. You will have seen us around setting cameras all over in the field in areas where the forest canopy is maybe too high where we won't see animals. And they also look at night because when we do the surveys, we'll do them obviously during the daytime and the cameras will then capture wildlife at night. And a lot of the special wildlife of a place like Morle, for example, the carnivores, leopard, lion, caracal, genets, they all come out at night. <laughs> Road counts are good because the vegetation is thick and we can see what's happening underneath. And the way we do it is we develop fixed routes through the park and we travel along those routes and when the game guards see an animal, they stop the vehicle. We record the species, we record the number, and we record the distance to the animal. And we record the GPS position. And the reason we do that is to determine the observation curve for each animal in that particular vegetation type. We've got a number of these counts taking place around the park and then we augment that in areas where there are no roads with foot patrols. And we can bring all of those data together to give us an overview of the wildlife numbers in the various sections of the park that we monitor. Road patrols and foot patrols are part of a bigger group of monitoring methods we use. One is the air, an aircraft, so we do flights overhead and we count the animals we see. And that's particularly good for the big species, like elephants and big herds of buffalo. Roan antelope, 2, 25 meters, 9 degrees, 0.2418. Cobb, 1. As we collect all the data, we enter it into various software packages. For the road counts and the foot patrols, we enter it into a program called Distance that automatically calculates uh, wildlife densities per species, per habitat for us. For the other two methods, we, we've developed special databases, and from that we can look and see which method is the most appropriate run for each species, and from that start compiling a park-wide set of numbers for all the game, all the wildlife that occurs in these areas. We will never be able to see all the squirrels in this tree next to us at the moment, but what we will be able to do is say if we use the same methodology and say we look at this tree in a certain way for 10 minutes every day, over 10 years we're going to get a very good idea about what the tree squirrel population in this tree is. And so with the park as well. If there's regular monitoring that the park can do, 
through regular road counts, through putting the camera traps out, let's say for a week every year, and then analyzing an index out of that, they can get a very good idea of the trends of the wildlife as they progress through the years and whether they're increasing or decreasing. The importance of looking at wildlife in uh, Ghana, especially in Molo National Park, and the reason why we're going to be doing the uh, survey of wildlife is because there's a link between the economy and wildlife. In Namibia, where I'm from, um, we've already exploited to a large degree sustainably um, wildlife and the ecosystems as services for people and economic potential. And in Ghana, it's also important that the wildlife potential for tourism, which has a knock-on effect, effect for uh, communities around the area, is really important because that helps the economy um, from a tourism perspective. So many will use uh, a stone in the dehousing process, some will use sticks. This is an eco-village uh, where a lot of tourists, like uh, people from Europe, come here a lot. They do their activities and then they generate a lot, a lot of income to the community, which the community use in terms of community development funds for the community. We have uh, a local guided walk in the community, we have drumming and dancing. We feel it's very important that we leave these tools behind for the park staff to continue doing this work once we have gone. We've come here from Namibia to help because Namibia is quite advanced in wildlife management, but we are training the staff in the park to be able to take over and do it themselves without external assistance.